D'Addario's newly redesigned NS Micro headstock tuner is even better than before. It has a wider opening ratchet grip, 360 degrees of adjustment, and a simplified button layout, designed in partnership with Ned Steinberger. guitar hanging out with Thunder Pussy just after a thunderstorm in Nashville, One Tennessee, pussy. or with Shreddy Petty, truly known better as Whitney Petty. Ah. Whitney, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good. It's good to be back in Nashville, home yeah. of some really amazing artists and great music, and you know, even though it is storming outside pretty It heavily, literally is thundering. It is. If we brought talking. the thunder, it's what we do. <laughs> Before we get into guitar talk, which obviously what we brought here today for is a uh, what, like a month, a little over a month ago, you guys got the court case with you and the slants and everything. You, right, right. That's been concluded. So fill our audience in about what Thunder Pussy has gone through with the name and try to trademark that. Yeah, I mean, we applied for our trademark at both the federal level and in the state of Washington about five years ago. And we received the one in Washington, but we were sidelined and denied at the federal level. Um, and we were called uh, what was it, disparaging, scandalous, and immoral. These are all things that are part of this antiquated act called the Lanham Act that dictated why the federal government could deny us. Um, but they basically said, you have to wait for another case. Uh, and it was the case of the Slants, an Asian American band out of Portland, very similar case. And they won, and we thought, oh, we'll win, but they said, ah, ha, 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 <laughs> the slants were disparaging and scandalous. You're immoral and scandalous. A so you have game. To, so you have to, I was like, okay, I guess we're immoral now. What the fuck? So then we <laughs> had to wait on a different case. This, uh, this man named Brunetti, who has a clothing, clothing company that is spelled F-U-C-T, uh -huh. which is also immoral, apparently. Um, and so we're waiting on him, and he just won his case. So now I'm under the impression that we're just waiting on the paperwork to be filed. But you know, if you've ever like gone to the DMV or had to deal with the federal government at any level, you know, they're always wanting one more thing and one more piece of paper, and just wait a little while longer. And oh, we've got to ask this person, and it's just like we're just, you know, whatever. We'll wait forever. Obviously, for you guys and what you're about in the slants, obviously is probably attached to the music and the band and the, the image is also a freedom of speech thing. Oh, 100%. But what does that mean for you guys to have that as a band? Is that like, in layman's terms of someone that's in a band that might have a similar situation or why is it important for a band to have a trademark? Is it merch? Is it? Is that's it a great question. I mean, it's just something that you do. I mean, can you imagine if Nike didn't have their own trademark? Or, I mean, if Freddie Mercury, yeah, have, yeah. if Queen didn't have their own trademark, um, Basically, you, you can't send cease and desist letters if someone is trying to steal your brand. I mean, if someone else applied for the trademark and you know, was able to get it and we had forgotten to apply, they would have all the rights. They could then come to us, even though we've been a band for five years and they're a brand new company, and they could say, hey, we have the trademark, so you have to cease and desist, so it's ours now. And there's nothing we could do. We would have to just stop being Thunder Pussy. Yeah if someone else was able to trademark it. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with copyright protection. You can copyright ideas and logos and images and fonts. You can even copyright songs, which is what you do when you register with a PRO like BMI or ASCAP. But for your actual name, uh, your, the name of your business to be 
trademarks is a really important protection that you need and merchandise would be a very obvious thing yeah. I mean, if someone's outside your your gig slinging t-shirts you know maybe it's not a big deal when you're playing at the high watt in nashville but i want to be playing arenas yeah. and that's a million dollar industry and you need to protect your name understand so it's not only just a a First Amendment right and speech, but it's also, you know, money. Yeah, but it's, it's definitely a, a freedom of speech thing at yeah. its core. And the reason that Brunetti just won his case and the Slants won their case was on the grounds that the government's not allowed to tell you what is disparaging or scandalous or immoral, and the Lanham Act is antiquated and needs to be changed. Well, we're glad that you guys took the step to take that fight on. Thank you. And with all the legal jargon aside, let's just talk guitars, because that's where we're here. It's so much easier. Yeah, right? <laughs> I feel like a weight is off our shoulders. Now let's talk <laughs> about this beautiful, air quotes, new guitar that you got from a very famous friend. Yeah, this is a, a Mike McCready Relic Les Paul, and it's actually <laughs> identical in a lot of ways to his actual 59 Les Paul, which he was kind enough to let me use to record our song, Velvet Noose. Um, Mike let, lets me play all his guitars because he's a champ. And when he uh, was graced by Gibson with his own relic series, his own signature series, mm -hmm. um, he put one aside for me. And um, like I was telling you, he pulled me into the men's room yeah. at the showbox after we played Flight to Mars with his band. And uh, he's like, Whitney, I have something I want, I want to give you. And he gave me this guitar. And I mean, down to the the buckle wear on the back and even the this little thing that kind of looks like an onk here like this is all stuff that's really on Mike's guitar. Yeah, you've probably seen the original or the one that he has yeah. so you, you can vouch for its, it's you know. It's it's insane and and I was really curious. Uh, we went to a tour of the Gibson factory today yeah. which was mind-boggling. Thank you, Gibson. I asked, you know, is this something that is like a program and then you, you know, just set it up and it laser etches it? And no, these happen in the custom shop and each little detail is applied by hand, like with a razor blade. Yeah. Like they go in and they do all of this to each single guitar based on a scan that they've made of Mike's guitar. They have like a computer scanner. They just rotate it digitally and someone goes in and matches every single blemish. Now for someone that's played that, you know, you've played the 59, and this one, how do you feel it's, you know, obviously guitars are different, wood, obviously all that combined, but yeah. they're probably pretty close, right? I mean, this, this thing has amazing pickups in it. It screams, it plays incredibly well. It's, it's just a very nice guitar. Um, Mike's guitar, I think just the age of the wood yeah. and the warmness of the fretboard, it's just, it's unbeatable. It's a really cool guitar. And as typical of Les Paul owners, You've already had a headstock wound on this one, right? I did. <laughs> Sadly. I did. I, I it was, you know, the end of the tour, end of the show, and I just had it off, and I just, it was feeding back, and I just, I don't know what came over me. But I just, like, just, I dropped it. Just, You're in the moment. I wanted it to, like, do that, like, ring out, and I don't know why I thought that the headstock wouldn't snap off if I dropped it like this, but I just wasn't thinking. Snapped it right off sent a picture to Mike and he said, well, now it's a Mike McCready. <laughs> <laughs> he also said, don't worry, I got a guy. And he did. I had uh, Mike Lull in Bellevue put this back on and you really can't tell. But it went from being just, you know, unserialed because it was an artist proof to unserialed because it has a new headstock. <laughs> and the uh, second guitar here is another Strat, but I've seen you with a red one, Old Reliable. Yeah, that's a guitar that my dad gave me for Christmas. Like, that was my, my first electric guitar, really. And so I've always kind of wanted to have a strap, but that one just wasn't really up to par. I mean, once I got this one, and I have a Tele that I really like, and um, just wasn't really road worthy or show ready next to my other guitars, but I just got this beautiful 50s reissue straight from Fender. And it screams, man. It is a really yeah, you can cool tell guitar. It's real new. I don't watch any fret wear or anything on yeah, it. Yeah, it's got a little, you know, a couple. It's it, getting did, there. It, it didn't last more than like one show without getting a couple chunks out, but it's a really cool guitar. I wasn't, you know, I never really thought I would have a sort of standard setup strat like this yeah. with the three pickups, but I, I love it. And it has a very fat neck on it, which I enjoy. Yeah, because you have, uh, it's funny, I've seen another video you guys did, or you did, and you had the old Reliable's HHS, HSS setup, right. and you call that the shred zone, yeah, the, the shred bridge zone. pickup. 
the bridge pickup. But uh, you know, honestly, I, I really wanted the uh, maple fretboard. Oh, okay. It's just something that I never had before, and I love it. Cool. And strings-wise, what do you do? You play different strings on, between the Les Paul and the Strat. Well, this one gauge? came set up with nines, which I wow. don't uh, ever play nines, but yeah, because like you do some big bends. Yeah, I've been. I don't really understand. Like, is it better to have? a lighter gauge for bending or a heavier gauge like which one's going to break less i don't know it's probably technique in the player I think. yeah i think it's different every way you, any way you ask so i just like to go on preference and yeah the the really slinky light gauge nines are just like a little bit too bendy i, I like to have a little more resistance and I, I just like the tone of a thicker string okay. I, I really like a heavy bottom with a, a oh, kind of like a hybrid set yeah which, which is nice um but I'll play whatever, you know, yeah. whenever you get laying around. I mean, yeah. give it to me, I'll shred it. Cool. <laughs> Shreddy Patty, I've known you to play Marshall Stacks. I've seen you with the, the Country Club or the Club in Country. It's in the van. It, oh, really? It, it broke. Oh, I, I, I really bummed. I've been kind of cursed on this tour. I've broken one or two strings almost every show. I've had problems on my pedal board. I've had problems with my guitars, and my Marshall has now broken twice, and that amp has never broken before. But I'm usually running stereo these days. Oh, okay. So I, what n a normal setup be like for you? Well, the Marshall Club and Country combo has got a very good reverb tank on it, mm -hmm. and it uh, is also really kind of MIDI, more of a high-end sounding amp. This thing is beefy and really mean sounding. <laughs> so I just kind of EQ one a little low or one a little high and use the reverb on the Marshall. Okay. Um, and just run them in stereo pretty much all the time. But I mean, this either one is a fine amp on its own. So. Did you put, when you put the pedals through, do you put it through the, the Marshall or do you put it through this? Or I've got each this, pedals go through each one? I've got this big shot ABY here. So I'm basically just running everything through everything, okay. everything on all the time. But I have the ability to just go in between one amp or the other. Now, how did you get hip to this company? Because uh, I'll be completely honest, I've never heard of them. You know, actually, um, uh, Mike uh, had, had a Rolla back, but it was actually called a Union Jack. Okay. So Derek Springer makes these amps in Tacoma, Washington, and he reached out to me because he heard about Thunder Pussy through the Pearl Jam channels and immediately was a huge fan of the band and asked if he could make me an amp. And I said, fuck yeah, you can. <laughs> so... Good answer. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he actually made this for me, and then Mike was like, what's that Rolla? And I was like, it's the same as your Union Jack. He had to change his name because he didn't get his trademark, and someone else took Union Jack, and then he went to apply for it, and it was gone. So he had to change his name to Rolla, and uh, the Rock and Rolla. And Mike was like, oh, are you kidding me? That's the Union Jack? He's like... It sounds so good. And now Mike got two um, lead 100s made this last month from, uh, from Rolla because he was like, I love the way that sounds. But it's a really great amp. And it has a couple settings on it. It's got a JTM channel and okay. a Plexi channel. And where do you uh, kind of typically live? I like the JTM. OK. You know, but I kind of patch in between. And it's good. I, I, it, it's really cool. Uh, you got to look at it. Everything um, goes to 11. So. <laughs> Which is appropriate as we're talking yeah. off camera. It's really good. It's really <laughs> good, good homage to the great movie. Yeah. Um, and let's kind of dive into your pedal board here. If you'd be so kind to maybe I'll hand you here your Les Paul, if that's not too out of line. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. I hear stuff? you. Yeah. Okay, kind of cool. walk us through your pedal board because as we're talking before we started rolling, there's two big boys on here that I've never seen in the wild, and that's the Black Finger yeah. and this Roland Wah thing. Well, I have um, this EP boost that I keep on all the time. I find it's just a really nice way to make anything sound a little ballsier. Cool. And um, this black finger, I typically use just kind of, it's like my, my, my boost in addition to the boost, but it sounds really cool. Like um, here, it's just like. Those are little preamp tubes, right? Then, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so that's yeah, where you're getting. It's where... it's a really great pedal. It has a little bit of a funky power supply. It's got this special three prong 
adapter on it and uh how do you run that into your out of your su it's, supply it's ac so i have to have a voodoo lab oh. 2 plus because that has the courtesy jack on it okay so i have it rigged up <laughs> underneath there where i can plug this into like a regular wall outlet and then plug it into the the voodoo power but it works you know but yeah i love this i use it for speed queen it's on all the time just a little better with yeah that, and you know? it just like everything kind of is more intensified but yeah not in a distorted way no it's really good and then um the double beat i gotta say is it's just a really cool wah pedal i really like it i um how did you come to like you know everyone has its standard whether it's the vox or the the dunlop crybaby i've discovered a lot of my favorite things on accident like my marshall i didn't really know anything about amps so i just found it on craigslist went and played it got it home and then realized that it was a rare amp you know, I was like, oh, I'll be damned. Yeah. And, uh, great. And I'll never get rid of it. And then this and this were both in the local music store on Capitol Hill where I lived in, in our practice space used to be. And I, that space was only there for about a year and then it closed down. But I went in there and I was looking for like a distortion. And I've always been interested in a wall, but I never had one. And then boom, here where these are. I mean, what are you going to do, not buy those? Look how cool they look. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I, I go in there all the time. So the guy knows I practice across the street. And he goes, you can't decide just take them both you know and then you can bring one back yeah. it's fine uh he was smart because he knew that i was gonna get he them saw both. you bastard he saw you I got, <laughs> let me grab a pick real quick you got yeah, yeah this thing has the craziest distortion mm. ever i mean it's just so mean oh the wah does yeah well it's so it's a it's a fuzz wah oh so so like a shine almost yeah, old japanese just, one You can't just have it on without playing it because it sounds terrifying. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, you know, the wall is cool. I'll use it for the intro. Torpedo love and stuff. But the wall just sounds really good with a little distortion under it. Now for like something like gentle frame, are you using the phase with that or is that more the wah because there's some kind of warble modulation going through the verses of those songs? Yeah, well, um, song? live, I don't even know what we used when we were doing that with Sylvia Massey. We had so many pedals, yeah. ridiculous, but live I usually kick this guy on because it's got a cool reverb. Got some really fun channels on here. You could probably use the phase, but... Yeah, what do you use on that? With the phase, where does that get used? Kind of sprinkled in? I always thought I would use it more often. I don't hardly ever use it anymore. I use it in the bridge of Fever when we do the big... So I got two questions within the same song, within the same part for Thunder Pussy. Mm -hmm. Cool. Obviously, there's a pretty gnarly solo that leads into this great explosion. So live, how do you get like the, the solo sound that's going on there? And then what did you explode or break? Was it an incandescent light bulb? It's a television. Oh, really? Like old tube TV? It was an old tube TV. It actually looked like it exploded on I mean, fire. When how would you throw a tube? How to drop it? About 50 feet. You had a mic set up? Yeah, we had a little task cam recorder. Sylvia, oh. was, we picked up the TV on the street in Ashland. Uh, we were living in Ashland for the month recording, and Ruby like really wanted to smash something, and I said, I've got the spot to do it. At least it wasn't a guitar. <laughs> That's always fun, too. <laughs> but yeah, we got the TV, and then um, Sylvia was like, I don't really want to be there, but here's the task cam. You guys go do something illegal, because we actually broke into the high school across the street and climbed up and threw it into their courtyard in the middle of the night. Um, Sorry, we left it. I don't know what yeah. it is. Didn't have anything to clean it up. <laughs> like a janitor. The principal probably watches this. It's so fine. Get it. it was fine. But yeah, that was really fun. But live, I don't ever try to recreate studio sounds. I just do what just feels, go for it. just whatever feels right on stage in the moment. I just play the shit out of my wah pedal. You know? That's fucking rock and roll. If I feel like I want to throw on some weird effects, then the afterneath is always where, it at, where it's at. This pedal is the coolest pedal. It's an uh, Earthquaker devices pedal and I just love it it's just so beautiful it's got those shimmers it just makes 
everything sound like Shine On You Crazy Diamond? Yeah. Like just David Gilmore vibes? Just love it. Psychedelic for sure. Yeah, I absolutely love that pedal. And then the only thing we really, really didn't cover yet, Whitney, is the rat. Like, so obviously you got the black finger, you got the EP on all the times, and then you got that Dude, gnarly thing. Rats. But where's the rat come in? The rat's gnarly. Well, or is that gnarly. just another fly on the seat type of thing? Well, I've actually ride. been using it like, so if I'm in the middle of like Speed Queen, and I've already got this on, and then I just want to go a little bit crazy, just a little bit higher, yeah. the rat will just make shit squeal all of a sudden. like. <laughs> three levels of shred. Yeah. <laughs> you just need di different levels of shred. But I mean, honestly, the rat sounds really good um, with the bridge pickup just by itself. Just... You gotta do that little utero tango vibe, you know, get a little, little warmth, a little pizzazz. Just hit them all, just fucking hit them all and see what happens. <laughs> it's magic. I don't know. But that's, that's about it, that's all I got. No awesome. more toys. Whitney, thank you so much for doing this, I appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for talking to Congratulations me. Congratulations to not only Thunder Pussy being an awesome band, but your court case. Hell yeah. And whenever that paperwork gets all filed, you know, whatever. <laughs> right on, appreciate Again, it. Thank you, Whitney, thank you, Thunder Pussy. This is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar, and before you guys sign off, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You guys rule. Sweet.